auto sequence start in five, four, three, two, one. This is Out of Bounds, two guys talking sports and astrology. You're listening to Wayne Moody and Mark Lerner. Welcome, everyone. It is Wednesday, January 4th, 2023. And after offering Podcast 107, Out of Bounds, two guys talking sports and astrology with Wayne Moody and Mark Lerner entitled The Astrology of the USA and the World, November 20, November 2022 to January 2023, Part 2, we now offer a new Out of Bounds episode focusing on the new year of 2023 and the birth chart and passing of soccer legend Pele. This new podcast continues our focus on the big picture of the first ever Pluto return in Capricorn for the USA using our national birth chart from the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776, and happening three times in 2022 and nearly exact again in September-November of 2023. The transit of Neptune in Pisces, making its first opposition in 164 years to the USA Neptune in Virgo during 2021 to 2023, plus Mars now retrograde in Gemini, from October 30th, 2022, to January 2023, and with the red planet especially making a several-week transit over the always profound and often surprise-bringing radical change agent USA Uranus placement during most of this January of 2023. The charts include the USA horoscope and an astro-locality world map based on the USA horoscope and the birth chart for Pele. Overall, this is podcast number 108, offered to the public since May 2019. How you doing, Brother Wayne? Oh, I'm doing good. Uh, my governor just declared a storm alert, and uh, my chimes are ringing like crazy outside of my door, so I know the wind's picking up, but uh, yeah. I'm safe and secure. Okay, great. Well, yeah, we're both on the West Coast, as many of you know. Right now, California is getting uh, un- the unfortunately named uh, bomb cyclone. Let me just read this one thing that I was um, I-, I had an opportunity to be on coast to coast. Everybody, this was January one. I often don't do that, um, or I'm not asked to do that at a new year. So um, this is just one of twelve or thirteen things I sort of was able to stammer out. But because it's now a couple of days later. This is actually what we call the perihelion of the Earth and the Sun. It happens in the winter in the Northern Hemisphere. So the Earth and the Sun are at their closest relationship, and it always happens either around January 3rd or 4th, at least this time. But here's what here's my full sort of message about what's going on with Mars and the USA Uranus, and then I'd like you to take your ideas, and then we can go back and forth for a while about what's going on, particularly in the United States now, with these cycles, but also around the world. So this is what I mentioned a couple of nights ago. During the entire month of January 2023, as the red planet Mars is virtually motionless on the USA natal Uranus and Gemini, there is a big increase in Americans feeling stressed and in panic mode. Uh, I stress that word panic. It has to do with one of the names of the moons of Mars. Americans feeling stressed and in panic mode about our most vital communications, the energy grid, electronics, travel disruption issues, governmental overreach and inaction, uh, which is an interesting phrase considering what's happening in the House of Representatives, plus international issues seemingly unsolvable. And then in parenthesis, I had January 12th, coming up soon, that's in eight days. January 12, 2023 is when Mars is officially stationary and at its most powerful to influence the Earth and humanity. And that's a stationary direct uh, shift. Uh, Mars entered Airy Gemini on August 20th of 2022 and leaves for the water sign of Cancer on March 25, 2023. So having said that, People are tuned in with every the, the, the craziness or the chaos with the House of Representatives. Um, 
we've had some um, very powerful forces going on in the sports world after FIFA and the death of Pele. We want to talk about that. Uh, what happened on Monday Night Football, which is now, what, 36 hours ago. So uh, whatever you'd like to share, please bring it up, and we'll go back and forth for a while. Well, let me start with sports, Mark. Uh, the, the World Cup championship is still warm. Uh, we're still getting all the reverberations, the celebrations in the different countries involved. And I want to point to... Um, uh, two conspicuous things from the perspective of the United States. Uh, we, uh, we're watching the Uranus line, uh, the astro cartographers and the people who use the maps of the world are using, are looking at what's, uh, happening on those stages. And we have a curious combination of, uh, of, uh, of narratives happening. Um, it was, uh, Argentina that won the World Cup, and it was cause for great celebration in their capital city, Buenos Aires. However, it was Brazil where Pele, the uh, quintessential soccer player, died in the in the same the uh, time period, and then. Another connection, another thread that connects to the United States viewing events is Bolsonaro, the former president, loses his immunity when Luna is sworn in and immediately flees the country, flying to Orlando, Florida, which is the United States Uranus line. Right. And this is all happening as Mars is crossing the United States Uranus. So... You know, as a as an astral cartographer looking at the sky above and seeing how it is reflected in the earth below, I found that particularly interesting, a, 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 a script that's still playing out, but it just ties together all these places for us. Just looking at, just looking at uh, the Uranus line. If you mm -hmm. factor in the fact that at the beginning, Mark met, said we're in this. This season and this picture, the big picture, the big picture is the Pluto return. Well, the United States has the Pluto was ascending over Brasilia, Brazil, and over Buenos Aires, Argentina, in the moment the country came into being. So in the last week, we've had the exact r return retrograde of the United States um, uh, of transiting Pluto to the U.S. Pluto. And mm -hmm. so uh, this was cause for me to give particular attention to what kinds of manifestations of Pluto are we seeing happening on these lines in these places. Right. Well, we have the possibility that uh, Brazil is going to extradite uh, Bolsonaro from the United States Uranus line. We also have the incredible news coverage of uh, the uh, the funeral of uh, uh, Pele and also an equal amount of uh, news coverage was given to the celebration in Ar in Argentina of the World Cup victory. Right. So, you know, um, these things all tie together and, and I don't want to jump ahead of, of where you're headed, Mark, but uh, the Pluto lines in the United States horoscope measured in an astral cartography or a relocation map don't just uh, show one narrative or one story. We were discussing this the other day, Mark, when we were talking about the United States Uranus line rising through eastern Afghanistan and the events that have occurred that were newsworthy in the last 72 hours. Uh, when you look at another newsworthy story, a very great paramount interest to the United States, you're looking at China and how they're handling the reversal on the uh, zero COVID. And you find that the United States Pluto descended line runs through Beijing. So this is the right time and the right kinds yeah. of 
uh, uh, storylines for us to be focused upon because Pluto has to do with the concerning massive fatality uh, uh, rate uh, and figures that are going to be coming out of China. Yeah. Back yeah. to you. And, yeah, well, you just brought up several important points. Um, when we had New Year's, and this was almost exactly when basically the whole planet is wishing and hoping what what good energy is, you know, can happen the new year. Venus united with Pluto for the fifth time in two years. And that's because Venus and Venus went retrograde last year, at the end of last year, and we had a bunch of Venus Pluto conjunctions. So the whole all of two thousand twenty two I was thinking about, like, what's going to happen at the beginning of 2023? Now, the Mars factor was already, you know, sort of cooked in the books. Fascinating that from October 30th, when Mars went into Gemini, and what's amazing is literally as we're doing this, folks, the moon is at 22 of Gemini. And in the chart for Pele, by the way, this is this will be on Great Bear Enterprises, and it's also be on YouTube, but we have a folder on greatbearenterprises.com in the in the astros, astroscope section where this particular Out of Bounds podcast will be in uh, folder 108. And you'll see the chart for Pele, October 21, 1940. His chart is an exact chart, or at least it's given as exact 3 a.m. in the town he was born in Brazil. And what's amazing, because of all the accolades and the influence he he has had on sports, on what they call football, what we call often soccer. It's pretty astounding that he was born with a elevated moon, the only celestial body at the top of his chart, a 22 Gemini exactly. <laughs> and Wayne and I were planning to do this, like, what was it, two days ago, three days ago. Everything gets delayed. Today is the perihelion. The Earth and the Sun are at their closest point. We're seeing the, and the intensity of Mars on the United States, Uranus, the thing I wanted to bring up about the Venus with Pluto, because what Wayne just shared is we've got this rare situation. 246 years after uh, 1776, Pluto has come back. So it came back three times. February 20th was the first one. We had the Ukraine war start four days later. The next one was, I think, July 10. And so we all were sort of, all, as astrologers, with bated breath, what was going to happen at the end of this year when Pluto did it again? Simultaneously, Mercury entered a retrograde, which is still happening, in Capricorn. Uh, and Mercury, this has to do with the weather stuff. Mercury stopped almost exactly opposite it, the natal Mercury in the U.S. chart, and Mercury rules temperature, wind, all kinds of astrometeorological things. And we've got what happened in Buffalo, what happened in the United States, California being bombarded day after day, uh, again, literally today, once again, and possibly in another couple of days. Um, so uh, I think it's astounding, again, like you said, um, I noted that Pele, um, um, th they had a whole celebration on the first, I think it was, or the second, no, it was, it was on the second, right? It was on Monday at the stadium where he played, yeah. right? They did this yeah. massive celebration, then they did a private funeral for him yesterday. But literally, as we're doing this, with the moon not only returning exactly for him, but the moon is on the United States Mars. And he wound up playing for the New York Cosmos. And that was sort of after he had done so much for his home country and winning. Nobody, No, no other country has won three World Cups. Uh, and so on. The, the last thing I want to just bring up about this goes back to Dane Roger, my main male mentor in astrology. I've got a lot of mentors, men and women. But he's the one who sort of brought up this concept. And this is really important with how Mars is affecting all of us, particularly, I mean, the whole world. Mars is spending almost seven months. This is a critical factor that people overlook when they talk about retrogrades. They don't share this idea that I'm going to bring up. When a planet is retrograde, including the often Mercury one that I put on my soapbox about, because it happens three times a year for three weeks, and I don't like seeing fear being created in the world of astrology, Mars, instead of spending the normal six weeks in a sign, that's its normal, when it's going at its normal rate, is spending nearly seven months in Gemini. So all of us have a Gemini in our charts. 
wherever that is, whether it's sun, moon, planets, or we don't have planets, it's in, it's in all of our houses and instead of Mars, just going in there, and I shouldn't say just, but for six weeks and then moving into the next sign of cancer and then another six weeks going to Leo, that's part of the whole thing of why a retrograding planet is significant. And, and this gets lost in this whole idea of, oh, retrogrades are bad, they're negative, you know, don't do this, don't do that. What really needs to be focused is what do we do during seven months of time? When a planet is focusing its energy in that area of our birth chart or national birth chart, and that's why this whole thing of like, oh, it's retrograde, or, oh, now it's moving forward again, great. You know, as if forward motion we assume is good, and, and backward motion we assume is bad. It's still a motion. And the other thing, of course, is that from a heliocentric direction, the planets never go retrograde. And heliocentric astrology is part of astrology. At any rate, back to you. But the thing is, is that Venus and Mars are the planets that surround the Earth. And when we get five Venus-Pluto conjunctions in two years, and we start the year with Venus conjunct Pluto, okay, so we have this sort of love versus anger factor, like what just happened in Monday Night Football, where, you know, two teams are going at it, and then suddenly everything stops when a player collapses and we still don't know what's going to happen there. And we see all this prayer and togetherness, which is so rare in a, on a field. Same thing with Pele. And then I'll toss it back to you. As you told me, um, what was it about a week or two ago, Pele is considered perhaps the greatest athlete of the 20th century. Remember what you told me that from a world yes. perspective? Yes. Okay. So back to you about this thing, uh, all these different things. Well, you know, um, the fact that there are archetypes for all the planets operating in the charts of each individual and in the nations that they are part of. And we have been, Mark and I have been studying and watching and monitoring uh, the, uh, the manifestations of Mars in the U.S. horoscope because of these returns, and because it's so significant. Uh, we're getting... Um, uh, uh, lessons on where does the country stand now with respect to its uh, its its military power, its uh, uh, the 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 uh, the vitality and the vigor of its economy and of its people. Uh, of how is that seen and, and 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 manifested? And we go to sports because uh, sports and the sports consciousness is is uh, everywhere in America, regardless of what sport you might mention. It is a part of uh, the American psyche now to be uh, uh, physical and for the public to celebrate it. So these mm -hmm. stories we're getting from the Pele and from the football field and soon the basketball season, uh, it, 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 you know, uh, will produce its stories, but we already have some about um, uh, prominent basketball figures who have said controversial things on court, and while we admire right. them for their abilities, we condemn them for their positions that they take in the public sphere, on the public arena. And so, uh, Mark, it's just been an illuminating season. And for me, and for you, who have a sports yeah. uh, background from our childhood, and we are also lovers of uh, these these uh, 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 competitions, uh, we know the benefits that we got going through them. But yeah. then there is always the dark side of of that kind of celebration in this country. It's like people love football and they love a good game. Well, what is the definition of a good game? What yeah. is a good hit? What yeah. does it mean to do some magnificent play? Is it yeah. literally to catch the ball with one hand and stay in bounds and, 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 and 50 yards down the field? Or is it a linebacker crushing an, a, a running back in the hole? Or yeah. the violence that goes on on the line between 350 and 400 pounds, six foot five, six foot eight men yeah. to a standstill? So, so we, 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 if we had any illusions about 
uh, the nature of the beast as far as the American culture uh, and 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 um, current temperament is concerned. When we see politics and we see people fighting one another like offensive linemen and defensive yeah. linemen, when we see that, we 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 should be clear that. Uh, and so, what are the rules? And, and all this does is bring me to the age of rule changes. That's what we're in. I see the, the society at large reconsidering what things mean. And you and I have been joking about, you know, they do this and they change this rule and they, they you know, they, they're changing the game. But why? That's why we do out of bounds. It's like, what are the new mm-hmm. out of bounds measures? And whether it be in sports, football, whether it be in sports, uh, the soccer world championship and, and the things that countries do to win the bids and build these stadiums on their lands to attract the media attention. What's that all about? You know? Well, Go ahead. Well, yeah. Um, well, we're going to get back to Pele, and I also definitely want to bring up um, and and, you know, a soulful – prayers and affirmations for DeMar Hamlin, you know, recuperating on a ventilator in a Cincinnati hospital after uh, collapsing on Monday night uh, football. And I want to bring up a connection there because in, in I did a podcast, what was it, 24 hours ago, based on what happened on Coast to Coast, um, where I was offered this opportunity to talk about these major alignments for the whole year. So that's also in the Astroscope section for all of you listening. It's called... Um, uh, what did I call it? The Big Picture Astrology of 2023 Part 1. So the reason I'm bringing this up is that, as you're saying, we've got this we've got this battle going on in the House of Representatives. Um, and I don't really want to... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of this another time about the history of House of Representatives. Brother Wayne sent me a very uh, illuminating story that I did read this morning on the first... A speaker of the House and the history of speakers of the House and the roles of that. And um, that should be an education for anybody right now looking at, at that kind of story. And maybe um, when we do the next one, which hopefully we'll do in the next two weeks, we can we can see where how many ballots have uh, did it take. I'm laughing. It's not a funny. Uh, it's not funny. And, and here's one of the things I want to talk about this before sort of shifting back to uh, what happened on Monday night. Um, in football, because there is something, there is a, a link that's very, very important about uh, John Lennon and Pele. So I want to share this. This is like so unusual and synchronistic in a bizarre way about their births. So let me just say this, that one of the articles I just saw, Wayne, and to the audience today is we may be watching this if you're watching these, I don't know if we call it shenanigans, these speeches you know, going on in the House while we don't have a Congress that's really being, you know, uh, starting. I mean, we need to have a Congress one way or another. And I won't, I don't want to get into the politics about it. It's very disturbing, I, I think, for Wayne and myself and many of you out there listening. We want to have people seated. We want to have a functioning government. One thing, though, that relates directly to Mars on the United States Uranus and squaring our series the largest asteroid, which is in a tight square natally to the U.S. Uranus. Series is at 8 plus Pisces, not moving, July 4th, 1776. Series has a lot to do with America as a melting pot. The idea of cereals and grains and and, uh, food and nurturing the world and nurturing ourselves. Um, It's the only stationary body of the main bodies, uh, eight planets, four main asteroids, Chiron. Only Ceres is motionless when the U.S. was born. So the idea of all of us coming here and intermingling uh, religions, philosophies, ethnics, ethnic groups, and so on, the whole history of this country before uh, so many people came here and now at this point in 2023. So as Mars activates and sits on top of our Uranus, which can be enlightening, which is what we're hoping to do, and so many of you out there in your own lives. At the same time, we know that Uranus is a planet of shock. It's a planet of needing to expect the unexpected. 
it's a planet of stress and worry when it's not when when we're not honoring it or if we don't understand what's going on. And Ceres represents how we nurture ourselves, the maternal forces. And there's so much about America as a potential nurturing country when we're working well. So Mars is is hanging hanging out there right on our Uranus and squaring on Mars. So what I want to say was the article that I just saw a, like an hour ago said, there's something more troubling about who's going to be Speaker of the House, which is that we have a lot of people in the Congress now who are sort of totally against the government almost doing anything, which is part of the reason why we don't have Kevin McCarthy getting enough votes. He's just so many votes short, and we have the extreme Republicans trying to sort of make statements and say, hey, you're you're not our guy, we want somebody else, and they go ballot after ballot. If we don't have a House of Representatives, and this is the crucial thing, the United States could default on its debts in so many weeks or whatever it is. We always have to keep raising the debt ceiling so that we can function and that the full credit of the United States is accepted. That is a shadow of Mars. Venus as a planet represents savings and value of money, okay, like the money that we all have either in the bank or the cash we have or whatever we have that's valuable is basically connected to the planet of Venus. Mars often represents the opposite, like these interest rate fluctuations, the inflationary kind of thing. Money isn't, doesn't have the value that it had. What, what is that going to do for paying our bills and taking care of our loved ones and so on? So what the, the article I read was very interesting because it didn't talk about Mars, right? And I'll, 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 I'll throw this back to you, and then I just need to remember the connection uh, to Paley and John Lennon with Monday Night Football. So I want to share that, but I want to give you a chance to respond to what I'm saying here. Um, the debt ceiling has to be raised every so often. And, and you can't not have a House of Representatives, and even if you have them, they have to be willing to do that. Because otherwise, the country could go down in flames relative to the rest of the world with the dollar, the reserve currency, the Federal Reserve, and all these other kind of things, the currencies, oil prices, and so on. The other thing is that we have to pass budgets. And you can't do that unless you have a seated house. So this whole thing is like throwing into light as Mars is just sitting on our Uranus for the whole month, squaring our series. It's like what we're seeing is the slow motion craziness in the House of Representatives. So while there are all these personalities, the greater disturbance is we can't have a malfunctioning or non-functioning House of Representatives. Back to you. Well, the the Constitution of the United States gave the legislative body the power, in particular, the House of Representatives the power of the purse. Right. So the executive, the chief executive, he can want to do all kinds of things, such as go to war. Right. But, or, or make treaties. But if he doesn't get the vote and the approval of the house, he has no money to pay for the war. Yeah. And therefore he is not empowered. He doesn't have agency. And so that's why we're looking at a slow-moving catastrophe in the midst of the Kabaki yeah. show. We're watching, yeah. you know, uh, the Low and Hardy annex. Uh, you know, we're watching the Three Stooges. Yeah. We're watching the the, glor- the glitz and, and and the thing that makes television and and yeah. uh, and voyeurism so um, uh, right. addictive in the American culture, but. I'm not mindful that is if you're cheering for a guy who's getting kicked, you're yeah. kicking yourself. You're getting kicked because Kevin McCarthy or whomever the speaker is going to be yeah. from the Republican Party serves the public. Well, uh, let, let me break in here. This is I told you this a while back when Kevin McCarthy, this is early in the year or maybe even last year. And I did this. This is just like because you just brought up. Um, Laurel and Hardy, the three stooges. So I have to bring this in because I was focusing on it. You kind of read my mind. There was another Kevin McCarthy. The Kevin McCarthy, who is the actor in the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And what's amazing about this is that I've been, you know, focused on Kevin McCarthy 
the speaker or, uh, you know, the minority leader of the House for the last couple of years. But, you know, and I did do his chart a while back and I knew it was a sun sign Aquarius. So that I knew. And at some point I started thinking, I wanted to look up the other Kevin McCarthy because as a kid, I loved the original um, Invasion of Body Snatchers. And if you never saw that, and Kevin McCarthy is the key actor. And at the very end, in California, not far from Brother Wayne, if I can say that, in California, when the, these pods are arriving, he's running and screaming. Did you see that original movie? Not the Donald Sutherland one, the one, the original one, you know, which one I'm talking about from the Black Well, Knight I don't one. recall the details, and I'm going to have okay. to check it out, oh, Mark. Okay, okay, folks. The Donald Sutherland one was a repeat. It's okay. It's not too bad. But you know about repeats. This is the original one from the 50s, one of the greatest science fiction movies ever about the pods coming in from, I don't want to spoil it, but basically people's identities are being stolen by alien forces coming through V-Pods. It's a fantastic premise and idea. Well, this actor, Kevin McCarthy, was in it. And at the very end, I guess this will be a spoiler alert, he's screaming, they're here, they're here. I'm doing my best impression. And he's running through the street and these pods are being taken by trucks and they're going, at one point, what was really interesting was in the actual movie, they show a train thing leading to Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> and I live in the greater Eugene, Oregon. And I, when I watched it recently, I said, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. I never saw this in the beginning. When I saw this movie, I was living in New York. So, you know, here I am not far from where the P, the pods of, of this great movie. Anyway, Kevin McCarthy, here's the thing, is also a sun sign Aquarius. The actor, he passed away. He was born um, in February, a little later. Uh, Kevin McCarthy is a January 26th baby, 1965. So I was looking at his chart. And he is very connected to the U.S. chart, not in a very easy way, but um, there's a reason why he's, you know, been the minority leader and why this is all happening. And at the same time, there was this figure, and he was born in Seattle. Okay, the, the Kevin McCarthy is, a, is born in Bakersfield, so he's a California native, and he represents this area of Southern California, and he's been in the house for you know quite a while. The Kevin McCarthy actor was actually born in Seattle, and then what happened was his parents both died during, and this is like another synchronicity to the last couple of years, during the Spanish flu, both of his parents died of this actor. And then he was raised by a family member of all places in Minneapolis, which is the whole George Floyd area. Well, this actor passed away a number, not too far, you know, a number of years ago. I forget what it was. And he was born on, I think it was Valentine's Day in 2000 and, uh, excuse me, in 1914. So when his parents died, he was like four. Okay, he became an orphan, then went to Minneapolis and so on. But he became an actor. He was in over 100 movies, you know. But he played this iconic role. And it's all in California. And if we do astrophotography, both Kevin McCarthy was born in Seattle, right, the actor, in 1914. This other Kevin McCarthy, 100 years later, is in the house from Bakersfield, with all of this scary kind of stuff about who are we, facts, reality, kissing the president's ring down, you know, after he had declared, you know, remember that whole thing with, with the, the Capitol, uh, with the insurrection, Kevin McCarthy made a statement about the former president saying, you know, he should resign. That was in the two weeks before, you know, the next, um, uh, before Joe Biden was going to have his oath of office and so on, that uh, President Trump should resign. Then he went down there, kissed the ring, and changed everything. And this is where we are now. It, it, what I'm saying is there's this duality about who he is. He's not being acceptable. He's a sun sign Aquarius. And the actor who came from the same line of energy was the person talking about this duality of aliens coming through these pods. Um, and cha changing people. So there, I remember thinking about it as like, this is like a morality play if we were to all watch that movie from the 1950s of alien sort of consciousness taking over the country. And the other part about this that you and I talk about all the time is about the COVID thing, this whole division the last couple of years where science is being thrown out the window. And what my concern is, and I think it's yours as well, we're older, okay, we are people who've been involved with astrology for 
myself 50 years, Wayne for 30, 35 to 40 years. We've got almost 100 years of astrology. And when we did astrology in the beginning, at least when I did it, I think the same for you, right? We did charts by hand. There were no computers. Everything is like racing forward. But as we go forward, we want to evolve and not devolve. And I just, I just find that movies, you brought up Laurel and Hardy and the Three Stooges. It is astounding to me, even watching the last two days, you know, on television, that that somehow that whole thing is like would be like a Saturday Night Live episode, but it's actually reality. It's actually reality. Mark, I want to add something to what you were saying about the McCarthy who was uh, in, uh, uh, in the movie. Uh, right. You said both of his parents died during the Spanish influenza? Both. He became an orphan. He, he, then an uncle had him live okay. in Minneapolis. Okay, so here's the deal. So Kevin McCarthy and this whole trauma of the pandemic, and then we go back to the last great pandemic of the United States, there is another Kevin McCarthy directly impacted by that. I just wanted to make those connections. Yeah, yeah. And and before I forget, because I often lose a thread when I do my own stuff. So you're going you're to connect it to Lennon, by the way. Yeah, John Lennon. That's exactly where I want to go. So we had the triumph of Lionel Massey. By the way, I'm born on the 10th, and I, for whatever reason, I, when I, in sports, when I noticed somebody wearing the number 10, Lionel Massey wore 10. Why is he wearing 10? Probably because Pele was number 10. Okay. So I've noticed this a whole lot. Justin Herbert, who played uh, for the Eugene Ducks, who's now doing so well for the Los Angeles Chargers, is in number 10. You know, um, all these different numbers and so on. The foundation of astrology is numbers. Mars is sitting for this whole month now, and it just became exact on our Uranus, just at, you know, when I say exact, to, as you know, Wayne, the degrees and minutes of art. We are often sticklers, not just, oh, this is like Mars is near our Uranus. No, th- these are like direct hits. And Mars is so slow now that it's just sitting on our Uranus. And we're seeing this through television, which is a Iranian invention. Television. Mark, is it, at nine, is it at 9 or 10 degrees of Gemini right now? Oh, no, well, uh, 8 plus. So it's, it's drifting back to 8 plus, which is where it will station. It's not going to go to 7 plus. Okay. It's sitting on 8 plus, which is the Uranus degree in the U.S. chart. And it's just sitting there. So just as that's sitting there, we have on television with this particular thing. Look, let's go, let's go to the sports for a second because that happened the night before all of this. And I think that's important because what we're doing with two guys talking sports and astrology is the juxtaposition that on Monday night football, Monday was a holiday, bank holiday and so on because New Year's was on Sunday. So here we have all of Monday, a lot of people were still having a three-day weekend. And then after all of the bowl games, and there were still some more bowl games, we watched Monday Night Football. Now, just to put out the information again, at 8.55 Eastern Standard Time in Cincinnati was when DeMar Hamlin, number three, safety for the Buffalo Bills, came out of the uh, University of Pittsburgh, has been playing the last two years, tackled a wide receiver, and then stood up, and then collapsed. Okay, so then it was, let's see, 30 minutes later after him, his heart was, um, and I've sort of experienced this with a loved one, you know, with the CPR and shocking somebody's heart. You saw all the players there. Uh, it changed everything. Everything went from the gridiron, the battle, who's going to win this game in the first quarter, to like love, caring, heart, soul, you know, on a Mark, and, I'd like to add yeah. something. When it, when it, okay. okay, look, I looked up the Sabian for uh, nine degrees of Gemini, yeah. ra- ra- uh, rounding off the U.S. Uranus yeah. position. And as you know, it's a quiver filled with arrows. And go. the keynote yeah. for that is man's aggressive relationship to natural life as a yeah. basis for survival and conquest. Now, uh, uh, remember, uh, a game is an artificial construct, and the rules right. set on the game is an artificial con- right. uh, construct. It's not natural. And here's the final thing. It says it may be a conquest of outer nature 
or that of instinctual drives and that of the limiting power of the ego. It's always right. conquest. I just wanted to add that to what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for sharing all that because Rudyard's um, astrological mandala, which is a kind of a re reevaluation of what um, his colleague, Dr. Mark Edmund Jones did with the original saving, saving symbols in 1924. And Wayne and I use these saving symbols so many other astrologers do for the 360 degrees of the zodiac back to what happened there. So without going into all the details, cause you know, if you didn't see it live, I didn't see it live, but then it was um, on one of the news stations. They went on for hours, just about this. Every, all the news disappeared. It was yep. just on this. Okay. Yep. Now that's important for this re for this reason. I started looking up a number of what athletes now, again, Thankfully, um, he is recovering, or so far is recovering. So he didn't die on the field. The only person who's ever that ever happened, you could look him up, Chuck Hughes, H-U-G-H-E-S, football player, originally for the Eagles, then was for the Detroit Lions. He was 28-plus. Um, he died on the field in a game against the Bears. Okay, now, so you can look up Chuck Hughes, and his widow is still alive. And there's a whole story about that. So the only f pro football player who ever actually died on the field during a game. Um, but here, let's get back to John Lennon. Okay, so as I was watching this for several hours, which I was just planning to watch the game, you know, or part of it, and suddenly the game wasn't on. And then I started hearing about what happened. I started remembering, because I was, I was a young person then, I was, what, 29? Saturday, uh, Monday night football, December 8th of 1980. And Howard Cosell and um, Frank Gifford and Dandy Don Meredith were, were doing the ABC Monday night football, December 8th, 1980. This is 23 days before Jupiter and Saturn came into a conjunction, as Wayne and I have shared, in the sign Libra, the first of three. Eventually, Ronald Reagan almost lost his life in late March um, during uh, right after one, uh, the second Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, he survived. Um, this was also the time period when Welcome to Planet Earth began, and my second daughter was born at the, near the third one of these Jupiter-Saturns in the summer of 1981. Meanwhile, the year I Jupiter, began. <laughs> and, the year and I became be an astrologer. And so what happened was, as often these startling events, like the, the, the murder of President Kennedy, Malcolm X being assassinated, Martin Luther King being assassinated, Robert Kennedy, and the other assassinations in American history and around the world, or m major events starting with World War I, World War II, um, 2001, all these different events that are larger than life and often very scary, and we mundane world astrologers or Earth astrologers look at these events and so on. So as I'm sort of watching all this and trying to understand and comprehend how sports again is now, and realizing that the next morning, you know, we're going to have this thing in the House of Representatives. Okay, well, all this is going on. Again, this is the, unfortunately, the fact that, um, as I've shared before, Brother Wayne and I had done dozens of these things. We've only done what set, this is maybe the seventh or eighth that we've actually put out to the public, but we were doing this for like a couple of years. And then the name came to us, sports and, and astrology. So on Monday night, before we get the astrology of the House of Representatives, which began, by the way, with sun parallel Pluto and the moon uh, moving toward Mars. So here's what I want to say about this. Again, this is so un unbelievable, and it relates to Pele as well. So John Lennon is shot and killed at the Dakota Hotel. Howard Cosell, the sports announcer, on ABC tells the nation and the world he's the first person. He gets the information of what's happening in New York. Mark David Chapman, we eventually find out, who had been um, someone who revered John Lennon, came from Hawaii and wound up shooting him outside the Dakota Hotel. They couldn't save John Lennon's life. Now, here's what's so, so strange about all this. John Lennon was born, I think it was October 8th, but he's, he's born in 1940, in the first week of 1940, and he dies when he's 40. Pele is born 
two weeks later, October 21, 1940. So Pele becomes this unbelievable greatest sports icon internationally of the 20th century. John Lennon is the first Beatle to die through an assassination on Monday night football. Now, when I went back, Wayne, to 1980, two things struck me. Okay. Neptune, 41 years ago, we know that Neptune cycle and America's being afflicted by Neptune opposing its own position. This began two years ago and still happening. Neptune and Pisces, opposite our Neptune and Virgo. So Neptune, one quarter of the Neptune cycle of 164 years is 41. Okay, 41 to 42. And we go back and we find that on December 8th of 1980, Neptune was at 22 cross of Sagittarius, and it just has stopped in the last, in the beginning of December, at 22 plus of, of Pisces, exactly square to its own position. Yep. And so the anniversary, which was in the last month, of John Lennon yes. dying on Monday Night Football. Yes. And then Pele dying at 82, halfway through a Neptune cycle, which is a dangerous thing for, you know, my dad died at 82. I had people who are in their 80s, you know, Anthony Fauci is 80 to 81. He, he's the guy who, who, you know, helped to solve everything about AIDS. Now he's being mercilessly attacked by people saying, look, look at all these terrible things you're doing. Now, you know, is anybody perfect? No. Was John Lennon perfect? No. Pele, apparently almost perfect, but like, you know, everybody's got their faults, whether we see them or not. So this was like astounding to me that this event of this young man. Now, here's the other little thing. Um, sorry to take so much time. But I'll throw it back to you. There was a fighter, Benny Kid Perret. And Benny, and I remember watching this fight. My grandfather watched a lot of these, you know, Friday night fights. He was a welterweight. He was from Cuba. He, he fought against a, a fighter named Emil Griffith. And they had a fight. And this relates back to this young athlete who's, who's fighting for his life, uh, DeMar Hamlin. DeMar Hamlin is born March 24th, 1998. Talk about a date, which is also Sun and Aries, where Jupiter is currently now, almost exactly. And on March 24th, 1962, the same day, 36 years earlier than this athlete who's been fallen on, on Monday Night Football, recovering in Cincinnati, Bernie Kid Perret was knocked out in a TKO by Emil Griffith, but he was so injured that 10 days later, he died from his injuries. Okay, so it was one of these events when you look up like people dying in sports and so on, um, whether on the it's very rare on the same day. Um, by the way, in my in my uh, other podcast I did, I, I talked about Roy Chapman, a Cleveland shortstop, the only person in the history of Major League Baseball to die from a pitch ball from a Yankee uh, spitballer, Carl Mays. This was in 1920. And I did share in my podcast a little bit about um, Roy Chapman, his birth chart, and the day he died. He was 29. He was about to have a Saturn return. By the way, Chuck Hughes, the only football player, pro football player, wide receiver to die on the field, was 28 and a half. There is astrology in all this. So the, the last point of all this before we go on is I, I couldn't believe it that I looked up. We don't know DeMar Hamlin's birth time. I just happened to see he was born March 24th, 1998, that he's 24 years old, but that his birthday is March 24. And I'm looking at these athletes and I remembered watching that bout. And then the whole news in 1962 of this Cuban fighter trying to survive and then dying of his injuries. And I looked up that, that the fight was on March 24th, 1962, the 36 years to the day before um, uh, DeMar Hamlin was born. There is some unusual synchronicities. Here we're linking up um, John Lennon with Pele. By the way, the reason I, uh, I was so astounded about John Lennon and Pele both being born in October of 1940, that was when uh, Hitler and the Nazis did the, the Battle of Britain, the Blitz in London um, particularly. And so John Lennon, as a baby, was born in that whole environment of the Nazis attempting to defeat 
the British and get them out of the war, which didn't happen. Simultaneously, two weeks later, Pele is born in Brazil. And I couldn't help but think, Wayne, Argentina winning this. Remember the whole thing about the Nazis going to South America and all these conspiracies over decades? There was a movie, The Boys in Brazil, and all of this other stuff. Now, this is bringing in like another scary side of stuff, but it has to do with the history that Wayne and I often talk about. Sports and the military and armed forces and our fears about violence and so on and these sporting events, which just happened again on Monday night football. You know, when John Lennon was, was murdered, I mean, that was in the fourth quarter of that game. I think it was New England versus Miami or whatever it was. And as soon as Howard Cosell made that announcement, everything changed, just like it did a couple of days ago. It was the same kind of scenario. And, 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 and the fact that John Lennon and Paley are born two weeks apart in 1940, by the way, remember my Jupiter thing, every 83 years, Jupiter comes back? Well, now 2023 is 83 years from 1940. And I've shared this before about 1939 connected to, um, to 2022. This has to do with Jupiter's exact 11.86 year cycle instead of 12 years. And I mentioned this briefly, I think, in my the podcast I just did, but I, I don't even remember if I did do it or not, but I'm mentioning it now. We are now repeating Jupiter every single day this year. is Every day is back to where it was every day, January, February, March, April of 1940. And 1940 was a very, very difficult year in many respects for the war and where, where that was going in World War II. Mars? Mark, yeah, I'd like to to put a ribbon on this without looking at the many details that you just gave, which are demonstrative of what we do as astrologers and what we can see uh, to reveal and put into narratives for people. Uh, back to the Sabian symbol for nine degrees of Gemini, it's always conquest. Right. So when we look at the whether or not Kansas City, whether or not the game should have continued, whether or not it was an important a game that determined uh, uh, who's going to go to the Super Bowl or not, these men had to crouch their desire for conquest, yeah. you know, on the field. And we saw it in real time. We saw these very strong, very big, very aggressive male men uh, brought to a standstill. Right. When their, their intended purpose, when they entered the playing field like gladiators, was to con have conquest over the other opponent. And, you know, it's interesting that John Lennon was give peace a chance. Right that limiting power of the ego there that's also a part of the definition of the ninth Gemini Sabian symbol. It's mm -hmm. also interesting that the politics of the moment are about conquest, about people just wanting to win at all yeah. costs, and that yeah. in the boxing ring, it was about conquest, and apparently Amel Griffin had a bone to pick with this guy as he battered him up against the ropes. Yeah. And, you know, the ref read it wrong and said, well, this is a guy who pretends that he's hurt. Well, meanwhile, he was hurt and he got beat to death. And yeah. then, of course, there's the obvious example in history of the Nazi period when that's all it was about, raw conquest, yeah. right. driving nations. So anyway, and, yeah. we're approaching and, our one hour point. Yeah, and I, I thought I would leave that as my last contribution. Okay, well, we've got, a, we've got a few more minutes because I want to go over um, the uh, Chinese Lunar New Year and for us to leave. Oh, absolutely, time. yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. We got that be our yeah. finish. Yeah, we've got about 10, 15 minutes here. What I wanted to do was just briefly, though, to um, connect a few dots. And again, affirmations, um, prayers, support um, for Damar Hamlin in the hospital. What I noticed, we're not presenting this chart here, but at some future time we may wind up doing that. His nodes, his fate destiny point, nine plus Virgo and nine plus Pisces. 
So we, we've got his nodes, which are the ascendant and descendant of Pele. So Pele, who did so much for world football, soccer, and just sports and love and laughter and a smile and his skill sets and so on. His, his, uh, apparently his, his accurate, one of these double A rated charts. Uh, he has a birth time at 3 a.m. Hope, you know, hopefully that's reasonably okay. But according to, um, the actual chart, again, the moon right now is exactly his moon, which is, can only happen once every 27 and a third days exactly. And his ascendant, Pele's ascendant is nine plus a Virgo, nine plus Pisces setting. And these are the nodes of the athlete who was just who just collapsed. The other thing is, is that that also means that Mars, okay, has been squaring Mars squared when it hit nine of Gemini in its retrograde, Pele died. So Mars was squaring his, his ascendant descendant axis. Okay. And the other thing about Pele, just to mention is he was born, which is really fascinating uh, because I have a Mars and Libra myself. He is Mars and you probably saw this as well, on his own node, almost precise, Mars at 10 plus of Libra for Pele, his north node, destiny point, 9 plus of Libra. And talk about Mars on the orbit of the moon. And in mundane or Earth astrology, the moon has so much to do with mass consciousness. And again, another validation of the power of Mars in this incredible player's life. He was also born as... John Lennon was, in 1940, we had a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in Taurus, okay? Along with Uranus was also there in Taurus, but Jupiter and Saturn were conjunct. And that's where Pluto is about to hit over the next couple of months and over the next two-year cycle. We're about to have Jupiter-Saturn. We had Jupiter and Saturn hit zero of Aquarius, um, which was which was only two years ago, starting a new 20-year cycle in uh, for Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius, and for 160 years, now we're going to have Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions in the air signs. By the way, this leads into the Chinese Lunar New Year, so let me bring this up. I did 13 podcasts about um, coronavirus and China and um, what happened there. This is like two years ago. One of the things about research was, if you go back in time, when was the last time the Jupiter and Saturn conjunctions turned out to be um, in the air sign, it goes back to the time of the bubonic plague and the Black Death. This is when Jupiter and Saturn, Jupiter and Saturn go from um, fire signs, earth signs, air signs, water signs over a 794-year cycle. And they are the movers and shakers in astrology. So the fact that Pluto which has been in the end of Capricorn for a long time, is about to hit the beginning of Aquarius. And as you know, and I'd like you to make some comments, the China chart, which is October 1 of 1949, the modern chart for China under Mao and the Communist Chinese, which is a fairly exact chart, we have a moon and ascendant in early Aquarius, and Pluto is poised to hit that point in terms of Pluto having not been there for 200 plus years. Now, here's here's what I said on my previous podcast. The Chinese Lunar New Year, which is the water rabbit totem, which occurs Saturday, Sunday, January 21, 22, is much more powerful than usual as it coincides with the potent Aquarius new moon, and this is important, plus the revolutionary radical change planet Uranus in Taurus is stationary at the Chinese Lunar New Year. That is not something that almost ever happens. And Venus will be with conjunct Saturn on January 21, 22. That only happens once a year. And Jupiter will unite with the asteroid Juno. They'll be in Aries. So what I said here, and I I did this in my podcast, and I said it briefly on Coast to Coast, this Chinese Lunar New Year water rabbit, Again, January 21, 22, with Uranus not moving, Venus conjunct Saturn, Jupiter conjunct Aries, uh, Juno and Aries. This leads to upheavals in China and fears over a new pandemic, student and youth uprisings in China and elsewhere, and financial instability around the world, including threats to the leadership of Chinese pres- President Xi. So if you can have some comments about that, I am very concerned because three years ago, this is how the original COVID came out, because thousands of, of people in China, Hong Kong, Macau, not only there, but from other places like where, where 
Chinese individuals were going home, back Vietnam. to their home country, and then coming Vietnam. back. Yeah. So, so now we have a repeat because they've had the as you said earlier. It, suddenly, we went from this these horror stories of seeing the different officials in hazmat suits, you know, shutting down universities, preventing people from even taking their dogs to go for a walk. Everything was a zero policy, and then these students rebelled. They were, they were all this violence. And on New Year's, Xi comes out smiling and saying, oh, we're reopening. Oh, you know, we're doing this as if, as one writer said, suddenly COVID is now just nothing more than the common cold. And and now this is what I find astounding. Look, China has, has is an amazing empire. It's, it has a long history, philosophically, spiritually, on so many levels. So much, so much damage was done to China by Japan before, you know, before World War II was starting over the centuries. But whatever is going on there now with this whole situation of lies, um, of what they're doing and so many other things, there's a whole issue of TikTok. You know, our Christopher Ray has come out and said, if you're on TikTok, that particular app, you have to be really careful. The whole country has to be careful because of getting data from individuals. There's just a lot of stuff that has to do with, and that's part of Uranus as well, not moving. I am very concerned that we're going to have a repeat from three years ago with so many people flying around, and the CDC and the World Health Organization seem out to lunch. We don't have any kind of real monitoring anymore, particularly where people are just like, oh, I've got my COVID testing thing, so I don't need to have to report that, so we don't have any statistics anymore. Back to you. Well, China for the world is a gigantic petri dish. Visualize yourself as a mad scientist, and you need to have a lab. And in your lab, you need lots of guinea pigs, mice, in order to do experiments on. Well, right now, they just unleashed whatever is there, whatever the reality is. They have unleashed it unguarded on a billion point three people right and so the rest of the world to think that oh well look at what's happening to china that's like the democrats sitting in the house of reps saying look at what's happening to the republicans no it's a pox in your own house too because yeah. this is a, a united this is a one world now personal on a personal note i have ever since 1987 when i was writing about the Persian Gulf, I have been aware that the United States Pluto lines went through Eastern Australia, went through Beijing, China, and went through Brasilia, Brazil. I am also aware that it went through the um, Arctic Wildlife Preserve, and that's because I'm an environmentalist and I was interested. But when I look at what's happening and what ties all of these places together, I also realize that the U.S. Pluto at 27 degrees at 34 minutes of Capricorn is my relocated ascendant to Beijing, my relocated midheaven to Beijing, China. Mm-hmm. So here is me, individual, one of eight billion now, and I'm tuned in for some reason to this place. Well, I have a sense of why. About um, 30 years ago, in the 1990s, I used to make a habit of going into the local Kmart, which is a couple blocks from my house, and walking up and down the aisle with a pen and paper to note how many items were made in America. Because, you know, there was this all of this big push uh, by America and all of this polit- politically going on in America in the 90s. Right. And so, because after after the U.S. Uh, savings and loans crises and the bank crises in America, uh, the Bank of America was no longer the largest bank in the world, and it became Japanese banks. And, mm-hmm. of course, the China, Japan was looking over its shoulder at China, sitting off coast. What's going to happen when they get their act together? What will happen to their economy? So here I am walking through the Kmarts in the 1990s, and I did this quite a, quite a lot. I would take note. Uh, is it all, um, um, who, who is it, the steward line of, 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 of items, 
uh, in stores? Nope. I would go and I would look and I would see labels made in China, made in China. I'd go into the to the yard care products made in China, made in China. I'd go into the um, uh, house um, uh, uh, appliances made in China, made in China. And my conclusion then, I didn't need to see uh, Forbes magazine um, put these facts out for me. I didn't need to be following Wall Street to get these facts. All I needed to do was go into the local community stores and see what the merchants had on their shelves. Yeah. Anything terrible happens in China. And with the United States and Great Britain and Australia and Canada agreeing to to, to yeah. put them in quarantine, if the worst case scenario bears out, the rest of the world is impacted because in our homes we have a huge amount of what we consider to be necessary items made in China. Anyway, that's my yeah, take. Yeah. Okay, and I, I know you're going to have a closing, but you just reminded me of one more thing. I, I sent you this chart uh, just before we started, and um, folks, I have, okay, most of you know that when you do your chart or you've had your chart read, it's not just a natal chart, the astrologer or yourself, you can look at your transits and your progressions. I'm transits looking at it are, now, Mark. Yeah, and transits are where the planets are at any given day, like what we've been talking about, Mars every day, not moving, sitting the whole month, nine degrees of Gemini, Wayne is giving out, quiver with the arrows. We see that effect almost in every area of our lives, including how we're feeling personally. These these dualities going on, you know, we want to be more loving, kind. The whole focus of GPS astrology that I've been utilizing from being at Lucis Trust back in the 70s, where the Alice Bailey teachings were, and then being at Fintorn, um, goodwill is love in action. That's part of the major theme of GPS astrology, trying to bring astrology to a higher level. What I what I realized, though, is um, we have a lot of reports that are sold through Matrix Software on our website. They're in the astrology shop, uh, astrology report area. There's like 17 different kinds of reports. The reason I'm bringing this up is what I normally do when I do a reading, and I don't know, you know, I think you and I share this, the, the foremost system of what are called progressions that have been used for a long time are secondary progressions where each day after birth, from your birth year and birthday, you add each each day after you're born is equal to a year of life. Okay, so that's the fundamental system of sort of substitution. There's an, There are many other systems. Another one I did a whole podcast on is called tertiary progressions, which are more connected to the moon. However... A big progression system are called solar arc directions. Noel Keel, um, who passed away recently, bless his soul, who did a num- some extraordinary things in the field of astrology, he was particularly a specialist in what are called solar arc directions. Now, we have a program that's called Solar Arc Predictions. It's part of what's called Get Into Your Progressions. I have this three-in-one. Um, you can get what's called Timeline Report. You can get Life Progressions, which is another report that we sell and solar arc uh, predictions, okay? Now, what happens with solar arcs, just so you understand where I'm leading up to here about the U.S. chart, normally I, Wayne and I will, will often say, hey, look what's happening in the U.S. progress chart, meaning secondary progressions, one day after birth is equal to a year. And that's the one I use when I do my readings for people. That's the most common form. It gives usually the best results. For whatever reason... I was doing research about the U.S. chart before we started into a particular program, and the program not only gave the U.S. chart the the regular progressions, secondary, and the transits, but it does a fourth part of the ring, which is solar arc. And I happened to look at that, and I see Mars is sitting at 26 plus of Aquarius. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, you have got to be kidding me because of what? The United States moon for July 4th of 1776 and our palace Athena are locked into a conjunction at 26 plus of Aquarius. And then another planet called Quaor, which I've shared about, it's a faraway planet in our solar system, discovered in 2002. I'll share more about that another time. It's definitely a real planet, is also at 26 plus of Aquarius. And so 
this is what's really important. That's why I want to extend this just by a couple of minutes and, and, you know, just get your take and then we'll finish up. Now, what this means, it, it, I saw that it was like a thunderbolt because I'm watching the last couple of days with, with McCarthy, right? And the Republicans and this, this, you know, the speakership thing. Nobody's being seated in the House. It's being televised. What happened with Monday Night Football? Pele dying. John Lennon, Monday Night Football. This, this young man, 24 years old, recovering. You know, not only is his heart being resuscitated, the hearts of all of us, we're all sort of stopping everything we're doing and feeling. And by the way, you saw, I mean, this was amazing. Nobody knew about all the toys and stuff that he was doing the last two years for children. It was like suddenly a, a door opened that normally doesn't open to the soulful, heart-centered, you know, what we need to do. And here we are with this bickering in Congress, the usual political craziness. But now the fact that, and this is important, in solar arc directions, okay, the United States sun is at, by, by solar arc progression, or is at 18 plus the Pisces. What's going to happen is, Next year, we're having this big eclipse on April 8th, 2024. It's going to come up through Mexico. It's going to go through the southeast. It's going to go up uh, into the northeast and and then hit Montreal. It's going to be the, the last total solar eclipse in the United States for like 20 years. It's the sort of um, parallel to what happened when, remember when President Trump was looking at the eclipse August of 2017, there we said, hey, you need to protect your eyes. You know, that was in late Leo near his Mars, his first year of being president. So that was the last one. It went from Oregon through the United States and then came through, amazingly, Charleston, South Carolina, where the Civil War began. And I felt that emotion, like not just emotion, but synchronicity. You know, why was that eclipse during the first year of President Trump's inauguration, a total solar eclipse going from, so to speak, sea to shining sea from Oregon and then out through Charleston, South Carolina, of all places, right through there where the Civil War started. And I thought, whoa, what's going to what does that mean? So now we're going to have another one, April 8th, 2024, conjunct Chiron. Okay, the reason I bring this up is about a week before the United States will have sun and moon come together in our progressed chart. This is true with whether you do a solar arc progression or you do a secondary progression. I mean, well, I shouldn't say that. Okay, what what happens is the sun is going to reach 19 plus the Pisces. This is next year. But in the secondary progressed chart, it'll be a conjunction. Okay, so the United States will have a progressed sun and moon in its progressed chart through secondary progressions a week before that eclipse. Now, the other point of all this is Mars doesn't move fast, you see, with the solar arc um, motion. It, it takes a whole year for Mars to move out of the 26 plus. It's not, a, it's not a couple of days. It's not a couple of weeks because we're moving the Mars in this system. It'll take um, a whole year for it to go through 26 plus of Aquarius. That's my point. So anyone doing a solar arc, um, progression of the United States chart, like next week, next month, three months from now, five months from now, that Mars is still going to be a 26 plus of Aquarius, is my point, on the U.S. moon, Pallas, and our Quayar. And that just adds a whole other level beyond this Mars on our Uranus right now in January, is that we got a sec- we have a solar arc direction. It's never happened before. Okay, this has never happened before in the history of the country. And after this year, it will not happen for 360 more years. So talk about something that's rare. Back to you, finishing up for today. Well, Mark, you and I have been monitoring carefully the United States moon nadir line that runs through the heartland of this country. We've watched events happen in Oklahoma City. Right. Watch the great biblical flood in Houston. We've seen all sorts of demonstrations of the 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 reliability of looking at that part of the country whenever there were major transits in late Aquarius. And all I can say is 
I hope these lessons now, these sports lessons, are taking root in our in yeah. our public discourse. Because Mars on the moon, the moon represents the people, we the people. Right. Right. The moon represents the security of every individual. The moon represents the aquifers in the ground, the helium that's in the ground. It represents all of those physical realities that we call America. Our biggest, our most important um, aircraft com- company is Fort Worth, Texas. And that's the, this is the heartland, by the way, you know, and, and remember Houston winning the World Series in a surprising way goes yes. back to this. Mars was already in this spot. And just to clarify, folks, what Wayne is talking about is the Nadir line, uh, I think you briefly mentioned it, or the IC. In other words, the moon and Pallas Athena and this new planet Quayar, they're all sitting at 27 of Aquarius. If you do the relocation for the U.S. chart, they're going through Texas. And if you go vertically, then you go through the heartland, all these different states like Oklahoma. I don't have it in front of me. Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota. Right. I'm on the right. Exactly. You're right. Yeah. Yes, you are. Right. Yeah. Like Mount Rushmore, whether we like that or not, you know, the oil pipeline stuff. There's so much of going up into Canada through the heartland, and then to Mexico. And the whole, the other thing that's being talked about every day here in the House, that the Republicans, the extremists, are saying, look what's happening at the southern border. Look what's happening. Yes. You know, Joe Biden is not doing this. The Democrats exactly. don't care. You know, we don't have a solid border. Meanwhile, if you guys don't figure out who's going to be the leader of the House, we won't have a House of Representatives. Yes. You know, like, we can't, you know, like, at some point, they have to stop arguing, which is the Mars factor. Now we see the solar arc Mars. It's And it's, you know, this is this is kind of terrifying on one level. I want to look ahead, you know, positively of what the year can unfold. And now to see that Mars is just going to be sitting there pretty much the whole year. I mean, the fact that we're articulating it today, I think, is important. So it's it's an education for me. I know it's an education for you, Brother Wayne. Everything that we've been thinking about with Pele, what happened with Monday Night Football, now what we're seeing happening in Washington, D.C. and around the world. So hopefully, as you and I would say, when we look at that movie again, 13 days, cooler heads prevailing, like during the Cuban Missile Crisis, we need a lot of cooler heads starting to prevail. You know, in our in our capital, with these world leaders, um, it, it, we're in a dangerous time period all over the planet, and just hopefully, you know, Mars will move through this area, and we won't have any anything more extreme. Keeping my fingers crossed, because that is, it's going to be hard to have Mars just not moving, and we still haven't had the Mars station to go direct. That's on January 12th, and then just Mars stays in this spot, you know, pretty much the whole month, and then starts moving off of that degree, finally. So I guess we need to say our goodbyes for now. Why don't you go first? Well, uh, when Jim Lewis died, uh, I had I had the good fortune of being able to thank him for what he had done uh, for me as a mentor before he died in the living years. And I wrote this, and this is what I sign off with, and it has a great deal of intentionality uh, in its words, that you, each of you listening to this, find your place, seize the time, and live your life as art, because you're all important. Well, again, thanks for you doing this with me, for us doing another Out of Bounds, Two Guys Talking Sports and Astrology. Lots of love and blessings to everybody. We'll be back with another episode soon. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Take good care. Bye for now.